You know how many people are not subscribed to us and watching our videos? A lot. I am angry. I am angry. Smash the subscribe <laughs> button right now and, and the bell. I should have brought a bell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We never we subscribe. We never ask. So, so now we are asking officially. If you don't subscribe, we're gonna bash you next round. <laughs> he angry. I beg, please. <laughs> One of the tactics will work. <laughs> Out of files. Uh, in a Lexus Ux. Uh, uh, this is what, 200, 250? This is Lexus Ux 200. To Ux 200, There's okay. three trim levels. This is like an urban variant, which is their okay. base model. Okay. This is the luxury, luxury okay. spec. Rukasuri. Uh, it adds a lot of kit. Okay. But the price difference is huge. F Sport, which is the M Sport version. Okay. Uh, Performance any difference? No. No, no. Since oh, it, but but you get pedal shifters. Okay. And you get adaptive uh, dampers at the back. This is the middle trim level. Yeah, this was launched last year during MCO. Um, a lot of news, but I don't see the car on the road. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, when I first saw it from the front, it looks like most Lexus uh, SUV would, yeah. which is... Big which is, spindle grille. Yeah, yeah, big spindle grille and then a very sharp eyes. Becoming a bit ubiquitous lah, from my point of view. Mm. It's a bit like how Audi was in the like early 2010s, yeah, yeah. where every Audi looks the same. Now I'm beginning to think, okay, is this a UX or is it an NX? Uh, is the NX an RX? And they do it for a reason. They want you to recognize the brand first. Okay. Because okay. most people don't care about models. Or they don't, right. they don't right. understand the model hierarchy. Right, right. So as long as you are seen in a Lexus mm -hmm. or, or mm -hmm. you identify a Lexus, mm -hmm. like that, you know, that's what their objective Makes is. Makes sense, huh? yeah. yeah. Um, first impression, actually quite good. Oh, yeah. Because if you are coming in from an X1... Yeah, this is this <laughs> looks special. You, you mean BMW is a premium automaker? Yeah. It, Suddenly it, you come in here like, oh, oh yeah, this is premium. Uh, this is you know, soft. <laughs> yeah. Soft. And the, yeah, a lot of things are soft. And, and, and attention to detail. Yeah. The design is like... And the colour. Yeah. I mean, at least this dashboard. You know, generally there is this pleasantness in Lexus that BMW failed to... To mm. achieve, unless you're talking about the higher end, one. and then I mean, there's knobs here. Only Lexus does that. I like it. You like it? It's right? like the Japanese wooden gate, you know. Uh, <laughs> you know the big <laughs> archway they have, I and know. then the two things together. Yeah, out. yeah, it's 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 a bit like that, and, and you know, it's 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 very Lexus. Yeah. And I like that because you know, there's there is a consistency here, a brand awareness. Yeah. That that is quite good. Strong identity. Overall, for me, first impressions, this is a very different way of doing things because okay. I think in BMW and Mercedes. What they do is they, they try to give you the cheapest of their parts bin. Okay. Uh, like X1, mm. they basically literally take the mini platform, try to fit whatever parts they can from BMW's old mm. parts bin and mm. they give you, because they know you will buy. But I, not, not to bash you if you own an X1, but really it is not very comfortable. Yes. Watch our review. Uh. <laughs> this car, it feels like Lexus start from, from scratch. Mm, mm. The gearbox, engine, the interior design, the materials, mm. the, even the exterior design philosophy to an extent. Mm. I know it, it, the first impressions are, ah, it looks like any Lexus. Right? Yeah. But later when we do design, okay. I'll show you like, like some things that even I, only after taking pictures, are like, wow, that is different. Mm. There is a lot of attention to detail. Mm. There is, of course, some signs of cheapness. Like. <laughs> yeah, the door, the door cut. cut. <laughs> like they stopped designing it after the door handle. <laughs> the door cut looks like from the Beluga Vios. <laughs> it's worse in the back. Oh no. Uh, door cuts are a single piece of plastic. <laughs> I mean, at least it's Aircon man, la, you know. It's true. Subaru, come on. Let's go for a performance review. Yeah. Let's see. All right, performance, guys. Uh, we are we're driving the car now. Now, yeah. first thing I have to say, I noticed uh, yeah. NVH is not there. <laughs> it's bad. It's bad. <laughs> what yeah, is yeah. wrong with Toyota? Hey, yesterday, just yesterday, yeah. I drove this car to Toyota and okay. I drove the Toyota Corolla Cross, yeah. which is launching soon. Right. And in the Corolla Cross, I did a benchmark. This speed, Yeah. it's quiet. Then. It's quieter than this. The powertrain is a bit louder, but the NVH. The we are noise. doing 110 now. Yeah. Um, there is there's there's a noticeable. Uh, there is a drone. Yeah. No, X50, we were driving around 100 to 110. It's quieter right? than this. It's quieter than this, yeah. right? Yeah. You know, I'm just stepping into a 200 plus 300,000 ringgit car. I really don't expect to hear this. Now, here's the thing the same problem is on Camry, which is 200,000 ringgit, yeah. but the same problem is not on a Accord. It's not. It's not, it's not on a Accord, <laughs> yeah, right? It's not on a CX-8, which is 180,000. Yeah, and it's not even on like the Corolla Altis or the Corolla Cross. Right. Whatever the reason, it is inexcusable. I, I, I personally think so too. It's a bit loud. Yeah. You see, especially the fact that we come to a standstill now. It is so quiet. Yeah, that's the biggest... And I'm glad we got this out of the way first. <laughs> because that is the biggest problem with this car. It is a little bit loud. So, engine. I noticed one thing. It's very revy. Yeah, it loves to rev. It makes a good soundtrack also. Yeah, you put your foot to the floor, 
and uh, the revs just climb straight to exactly where you want it. Mm. And there's a surge of power. Yes. It's not turbocharged top. Yes. Uh, it is horsepower. Horsepower is driving the performance. Correct. Car. I, I suspect the top figure is not very hard. It is not. Uh, it's uh, 170 horsepower. Okay. And from a 2 litre engine. From a 2 litre. This is 200 uh, Newton meters of power. Relatively low. La. It's in this segment, you know, when, when BMW is giving you a 2 litre B48 engine yeah. from your 3 series. Yeah. It's a little bit low, yeah. but I wouldn't say it's disappointing at all. Yeah. I think this performance for your typical Lexus buyer yeah. is satisfying. It's okay. It's good. <laughs> and the fact that the engine can wake up and give you a little bit of fun, it's impressive. I have to say this, though. Yeah. It's, it's not a powerful car. It's not. It's not. But it can be fast. Yeah. And in fact, it is also fun. You see, fun doesn't just come from speed. Because if you have speed, but you're not having fun, your hand will be wet. Because you'll be sweating. <laughs> Because you're scared, right? Yeah, yeah. This one, it's a very good compromise between something that is very truly sporty and something that is very top tier like an Audi. I think this is a very good compromise. Now, whether it is appreciated or not, that's a different matter. Yeah. Because it is not quiet when you step on it. The, the soundtrack is okay. It's, it's quite fun. Yeah. You know, it likes to be wrapped. Yeah. But there's still that moment of like... Uh, it's not a downward shift like in a Mazda gearbox. Uh, and you know why that is? Why? This is a CVT. <laughs> I knew but, it lah. But, but, but it's a special CVT. It's a top converter. It's a top converter and your first gear is planetary style. So when you're taking off from the launch, it's like a standard off And then when you go to second gear, it's like I see. So it's, it's, it's... Oh, can you repeat that again? <laughs> just having fun because you know, I just realised I'm driving almost twice the speed limit. I am not sweating and it's still relaxing and it's still comfortable yeah. and at the same time it's fun. It's fun. You're actually very near the limit of this engine. Oh is it? When you're going at that speed, <laughs> yeah. the top speed is 190 something. But it feels like the chassis can take more. Yeah, you know, the definitely. engine cannot give you any more but yeah. the chassis can keep giving. Yeah but it's not a fast car, it's a 9 second, 9 point something second. <gasps> Figures aside, what matters most is this car completely capable of cruising at extremely high speed. We're talking 160 to 170. Okay. Non-stop. Yeah. And I can foresee doing this for two hours to JB. Two because hours. if 160, you will reach JB in two yeah. hours. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Around there, right? Uh, you have to slow down for the... the, the, the uh, oh, yeah. That, that. <laughs> eight years. Yeah. But, it, you know, I've driven so many cars that can reach 180, 200 kilo an hour. But they don't like it. They're not comfortable in that zone. And you know it, you know. Yeah. The chassis, the engine, the gearbox, all tells you, okay, I'll give you... Let's do this for two minutes, okay? Yeah. That's it. This thing is like at home. At home, at that speed. Yeah. Completely nuts. Yeah. Yeah, so performance wise, uh, yeah. you know, the reality is it's still quite slow, zero to 100. <laughs> it is. But it is definitely special. If only Lexus uh, padded this car a lot better, yeah. wow, it would have been so good. And the seats are just so good. Awesome. <laughs> it's so good. It's like a mixture of soft and firm. It is. It is very weird. I'm very yeah. hard to describe. Because it is firm, you know, in the sense that you don't sink in there. Yeah. It's supportive. Yeah. yeah. But at the same time, there's a softness it, there to is the a first softness. layer. Yeah. yeah. There is a softness that is very ethereal, very hard to pinpoint where does it come from. There is a frothy quality to the whole car. Not just in the ride, but also in the entire general feel of the vehicle. You see, I, I quite like it, I have to say. Actually. I can't give it a 4.5, that's for sure. It lacks punch. And it lacks uh, comfort in terms of MVH. Yeah. I have to say it's a 3.8. I was going to say exactly 3.8. Yeah. But my reason for deducting is a bit different. The problem with this car's performance is that it's really, uh, it's not really anywhere. Okay. You know, you Lexus could have taken the pure practicality route, pure comfort route. Yeah. But then you cannot because of premium segment. Right. Uh, so I don't really know. You know, it's not really the most dynamic. It's not really the most comfortable. It's not the most largest in the back. It can do all of these things in its own unique way, but some aspects are not excellent. You, you, I think I think you put it very succinctly. Is that it, it doesn't excel in anything at all, yeah. uh, but it's pretty good in everything it does. <laughs> in its own way. Yeah. In its own unique way. Shall we talk about the design? Yeah, let's go yeah. ahead and talk about the design. So this is the exterior. Yeah. As you can see, typical Lexus thing like the right. huge grille. Right. But then, yeah. when you zoom into the details, come. Typical Lexus with all the L shape. You know, yeah. Everywhere. Everywhere you see L. Daytime running lights. Yeah. Instead of it being like LEDs, oh, okay. it's like nice frosted okay. white. So it's very, very equally distributed. Yeah, yeah. And then like this thing is like jewel piece. Man. Wow. Headlight. You don't realize it, you know, until you look very closely. Uh, even this shape, so I didn't realize it until I took a picture. I was like, oh, I, mean, I don't know if this is a functional one. Is there's it? A small, there's a hole. Small, a hole. tiny hole. I don't think it's functional. 
Oh, oh. Uh, and then the grill. Mm. From every angle, it looks slightly different. Because of, you know, every one of these things mm. is coming in at a different angle. You know? mm. It's all three dimensional. It looks like a dragon scale. Yeah, they did a lot of work. It looks like a dragon scale or like a scale armor. Uh, scale mail. Yeah, yeah scale, scale mail. mail. I really appreciate the effort that they put into it. Yeah. They have this matte chrome. Yeah. Mm, matte chrome, but then they also have that proper chrome. Is it? Oh, it's different. Yeah, it's different, man. I do not know whether it shows. This one is proper chrome. Yeah, this one is, is like, wow, well, sharp reflection. This one is blurred reflection. Because we can. Because they can. Yeah. Ah, because we can. Oh, this is a headlight washer. Yeah. But it doesn't work. Uh. Well, there's just an empty space. And you got this nice cladding. Yeah. Uh, well, nice is subjective. Yeah. You know, you told me CX-30 has uh, under-designed arches, uh, which I think you are right. I mean, you look at this. Uh, it follows, you're right, the proportion of the shape of yeah. the vehicle. The, the body line goes up here? Yes. So this one follows that. There are two lines here. Yeah. If you see, the two lines just move simultaneously and one just goes off to the back and one just ends here. And it's weird because remember the last Lexus we drove the yeah. RX? Yeah. It didn't have this kind of cohesiveness. Right. It was just lines going everywhere. I mean, I don't know if it's less busy because there's still a lot of lines. But it, it makes sense. But everything is cohesive. Mm. This is the direction I want to see Lexus. Yeah, yeah. See, there's a freaking line here, there's a line there. Like things are happening. But yeah. it feels like it's a flow. Yeah. It's. I think this level of complication is okay. The side mirrors, I like it as well. Hinged on the, the door. The L, the L, uh, L shape. L shape. <laughs> uh, it's hinged on the door instead of on the A pillar. Right. And the use of chrome on the side mirror. The wheels are what? 17? Uh? This is 18. 18. 18. 18. Uh, the F Sport model has a different design, but mm. also 18 inch. Wow, now 18 inch looks so small. Uh. We're just used to uh, the 18, 19 inches now. The back is probably the most dramatic of yeah. the entire exterior. Yeah. Tron. Tron, man. I mean, Audi started this. Yeah. I think they're, they're A5 or yeah. A7. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh? Porsche, Audi all do it now. Yeah. It's like a ribbon. It's like 1985 all over again. Yeah. It, it might not age so well. <laughs> yeah, I know. Because we, we've seen this before, right? Yeah. It comes and then it goes. It goes. But then that's the design, right? Yeah. The, the fashion comes and goes. We've seen it before. There's some unique aspects about this bag, right. which at first glance maybe don't come at you. Right. It's very station wagon like. The yeah. angle of this, of this uh, rear glass. It's so steep. You know what it reminds me of? Alfa Romeo Brera. Brera, Brera. Brera, yes. This is that look, right? Yeah. yeah. I do not know whether that's a compliment for this car or that car, but... Lexus got there, like, eventually. Uh, finally. <laughs> then you got this, like, wow, fins. Maybe. Wow, like, wow, this Gundam, man. Gundam wings for no reason. Yeah. Well, yeah. they say it's functional, but... Yeah, yeah. No, and no, it's, like, it's more Gundam. <laughs> it's a flat surface on top. Yeah, you, you can, can put, like, reflectors. You can put your ramen, <laughs> cup noodle. <laughs> I mean, I think in this segment, I have not yeah. seen anything like this Yeah, it's, it's, it's something to talk about. It's like the light is a spoiler. Yeah. And they just integrate, and then you got another spoiler up here for whatever reason. <laughs> no fake exhaust tips. Uh, which is good, I like. The more I look at it, the back is quite distinctive. Oh, yeah. No Lexus look like this yet. It's not just the look, it's also the shape. Wow, that's... Time for the bad part. <laughs> okay, now. Can you open the engine? Oh my goodness. Yeah. So this car is not electric, but this is the first time they're doing an all-electric car variant. And in, in, in Europe and in China, right. this entire section will be the battery. Right. Uh, excuse that part, we're just transporting some Jaguar Mark II <laughs> parts. But anyway, uh, very tidy. It's just very large. There's a lot of space there, man, actually. There's a lot of space wasted. Yeah. And the entry is very high. Loading loading might yeah. be a bit difficult. It's all the way above my knee. Yeah, it's like, dude, that is like the height of a two-year-old boy, man. That's how high you have to lift your luggages to, to put it in. But power tailgate, Okay. Um, it has like a kick functionality. This thing is a bit disappointing. Why mm. your tunnel cover so cheap? <laughs> I didn't realize they're blue in color. Nice, right? Yeah. So very uh, flat. Very wow, flat. Fact, completely it, it flat. Dips down. It dips yeah. Down. Let's sit in the back. So that's your driving position. That's my driving position. And this I is a leg. Behind or you sit behind? I try and see. <gasps> Here goes nothing. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing Same problem. X50. Uh, this one is very near. Uh, yeah. You have to sit on the wheel arch. Just to get in. <sighs> so just like the Japanese art of origami, <laughs> Bo has to fold himself to get inside. Folded into 16 different dimensions. This is literally cannot. This uh, is. It's cannot, la. actually it's cannot. Because you know why? The leg room, uh, this is my driving position. Yeah. And my knee perpetually touches. I think for you even worse. Let's show you. Oh, Coming out. It's not great. La. It's, cannot, I, it's, I, I wouldn't recommend it. 
the, the length of that that cannot man. I'm cannot. I'm literally part of the suspension system of the seat, pushing the seat back into its normal position. <laughs> cool. And then look at this one. <laughs> Why do you bother to make it two piece if you're gonna make it look like that? You know, at least give a different color. At least. Yeah. And at least you got the LC handles. <laughs> Plastic and some, some fake brushed aluminum. It looks like they didn't bother with the back seats. Huh? Yeah. I mean, there's a rear aircon vent. At least there is an aircon vent. Yeah, aircon vent and then some USBs. Mm. Where do we start with this interior, man? Um, well, I think we start with that. Oh, well, they call it washi, la. washi paper texture. Yeah. So if you actually look closely, you can see like a paper grain, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's like fibers uh, of, of paper, yeah. you know? But it's actually synthetic leather, I think. Right. Uh, it's awesome. And the color they chose. Yeah, well. the blue. Uh. So, so nice, man. Yeah. The contrasting white, just yeah. like the seats. Yeah. In fact, I should show you the seats. This uh, stitching oh, up yeah. here is called what, sashing sa something. La. Some other sashimi, ja uh. sashimi or sashimi. <laughs> I will put the word for it here. But this is also some Japanese traditional stitching oh, okay. style, okay. which uh, they incorporated in mass oh, production. Okay. Very, very unique. Even the ventilation hose, because the seat is, is ventilated. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the way they, they puncture it is like. There's a unique pattern to it. Mm. I, I didn't realize it. I just noticed that there was a, it's perforated, but I didn't realize that it's perforated in such a weird pattern. Yeah. Interesting stuff. The color choice of the seat. I think it's great. I've never I think it's one. unique, yeah. but I also think it's not reasonable because the parts that you touch are white yeah. and the parts that you don't touch are blue. <laughs> it should true, be the other way around. I'm already staring at a bit of hand dust and dirt here. I'm like, you. <laughs> This, I mean, come on. Yeah, man. you can already see the dirt yeah. starting to form. Yeah. What a shame. Uh, but this is kind of cool because. Both sides. And. Yeah, Mercedes got there like 15 years ago. Uh, but on the CLS, right? Ah, uh, yes. Not on the A class, not on the, on the, yes, the GLA. Uh, correct, correct. Nexus correct. brought it down to yeah. this level. You know the soft touches that Nexus do? Yeah. It's even here. Wow. You want to open the You're glove? It's such box? a wee boo. It's nice lah. I mean, I mean, it's expected, right? It's <laughs> you're paying like almost three hundred thousand for it. Volvo will give you a handle. BMW will give you a handle. Oh. Mercedes give you a handle. Oh. Lexus give you a button. X5 hide the button until I cannot find it. <laughs> <laughs> At night, this thing glows. You can see a little bit of a faint white color LED. But now it's daytime. So you can't see. Yeah. Besides that, there's no volume knob. My favorite part of any yeah. Lexus interior is the, the big volume knob. Volume knob no, um, T no longer there. It's uh, it's hidden. It's here, hidden here. Which you have this, to go like that. To see. Yeah. This is volume. This is off. This is media. I mean, it's not a, the best system. It takes some time to learn. Um, I don't like it so much. I think it will take some muscle memory to learn this. Once you learn it, I think it, you you can operate it without looking. BMW iDrive is more intuitive. Mm, mm. If there one, any monkey can go in and within mm. a few hours of driving, mm. you understand everything. Mm, mm, mm. This one, everything is contextual. You know, you want to find some certain feature, you have to go and find it. Like this entire menu was not shown before. Mm, like mm. how do I know there's a menu there? Mm. I have to press menu and then it comes up. Oh. You expect a touchpad to be like a free moving Thing. Here is free moving. Ah, and the maps is free moving. Yeah. But then once you get here, it's all grid system. Yeah, and you get locked into a grid. Yeah. And then suddenly up and right and left always means something it different. It looks like Sony PlayStation. Yeah. Uh, wireless charger. Yeah. Um, this is only on the mid tier and above okay. model. These lovely dials. <laughs> yeah. Um, on the F Sport model, this thing actually has the LC thing where it moves aside. Weird thing is like the headliner is white, and then suddenly in the pillars it comes I know, black. I know. Why? Eh? Maybe I think it was originally supposed to be black because it feels more pre premium if it's black. Yeah. But in a car of this size, maybe the black is too make it too small. It mm. feels too claustrophobic. Yeah. So they decided to change it. Change to, it halfway to. Yeah. Got a nice uh, capacitive LED. Okay. Nice. Nice touches. Huh? And it's not the Chinese white. Uh. The Chinese white is <laughs> <laughs> white. Overall, I think the interior is pretty awesome. It passes the passes the straight, the pipe, straight pipe test. test. Do yeah. you get heated seats? <laughs> no, no. I thank goodness. So. Hey, that's a CD player. Yeah, that's an actual CD player. Well, maybe it's a. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, interior and overall design. Yeah, is the strongest point of this car. Too. Okay. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, this ten point five inch screen yeah. is not on the standard model. What's your score for design? Design. I have to give it a four. I'm giving it a 4.5. Full of ma. Okay, this is nice, but why? What happened here? <laughs> okay, okay, maybe 4.5 is too generous. 4.25. <laughs> <laughs> okay, like, I managed to drag down 0.25. <laughs> I, I like it, mm. it, but I don't think it's deserved of a 
uh, uh, outstanding or uh. excellent because you know there's very obvious cost cutting here and being a, a potential four seater bike is not excusable uh. that's true that's you, got, true. You, you see the problem now if it's a coupe okay fine you don't design that bike I, I close an eye but this is not that's my problem uh. yeah. there was very obvious co corners being cut here mm. and it's a bit too obvious as well right. you know um, in all honesty I cannot give you a 4.5 right. it's not outstanding mm. it's very good yeah. You know, so four. Maximum is a four for me. Four point two. <laughs> <laughs> okay, value. Wow, value. That's a tough one. Uh, let's play. Guess the price. Yeah. What's the price of this car? I guess. Well, let's talk about the competitor. You have X1. Yeah, which is CKD. Uh, okay, that's not a good example, but it's about two hundred and twenty thousand. Yeah, yeah. Knowing Lexus CBU, okay. They have always been a little bit more expensive than uh, the entry level BM and yeah. Mercedes. You pay up front, yeah. and later you enjoy. <laughs> it's supposed to be somewhere between 280 to 300. La. Wow! Yeah. Wow. Okay. Uh, no wing Lexus. Uh, it's 280 to Very 300. Very accurate, man. Yeah. Very accurate. They have an entry version, okay. which is stripped down. Oh. So the stripped down entry level version is 240. Okay, now that is that is competitive. So yeah. this is what two eighty plus two ninety. This is two eight five, mm. and then the F Sport one is three hundred thousand. Okay. Oh, so that is three hundred. That is three hundred. No, okay, full, it's full it, to be honest, it is a bit cheaper than I expected, mm. especially if you are talking about two hundred and forty thousand. The question is why you didn't sell. It's not like the premium market suffered significantly. I think BMW X one just takes away sales too easily. Dude, I know, but your savings is, is crap. It's crap, but you get a full spec BMW okay. for okay. two hundred and thirty. Okay. Versus, uh, okay, the base model of this one, mm. no auto wipers, 17 inch rims, uh, 7 inch screen, no 360 camera, uh, no power tailgate, mm. six speakers, whatever. Uh, so it's like an entry, it's like a basic Japanese car. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh. There's no, this one. Oh, the, crap. The, the, this leather is not here. This leather is not here. Okay. So you get a very basic artificial leather. In yeah. terms of value, I'll give you a 3.5. Oh. Because, yeah. because it's not as expensive as I expected it. It is about 20,000 cheaper than I expected it to be. Okay. Mm. Value for me is still 3. 3. Yeah. Because in this segment, there's already very little reason to buy a car in this segment. It's true. Uh. You know, it's so such a you just get an X50? <laughs> if for your face reason, yeah. you don't want to be associated with Proton. Okay. Okay. You, you want something. You have some issue, bro. <laughs> <laughs> then you you have, you know, Volvo XC40. Right, right. Which is more practical. 240 something. Ah, 240, 250. Mm. It's a good buy. It's mm. a good car. Mm. And then I still don't see that car. Uh, yeah, it's, mm. it's and I don't think I will see the new one also. Yeah, the like, current. It feels like that this market, mm. this segment, mm. is completely dominated by BMW. By, by no two cars, GLA and BMW. Uh, but GLA is so the yeah, current actually, GLA is not really selling as well, yeah, isn't it? The previous one. the previous one is selling well. So yeah, hard. I mean, I mean, if you're gonna spend two hundred and forty to two hundred eighty thousand, really give this a try. I would say, you know why? Because two hundred twenty over two hundred thirty for uh, a BMW X one. It's not that great. Yeah. Have we driven the GLA? We haven't, uh, this generation. The, one, no. the better car in that segment is the XE40. Mm. It's comfortable, it's good enough, mm. practical. Even I find it too expensive. Hard it's, a, it's a 3 plus. La. It's, mm. I think you get what you pay for, mm, mm, mm. but you have so many options. Yeah, yeah. That's the problem. And who goes out there and buy this car? Have this kind of car. Yeah. You know, that's why I don't see it on the road at all. In it's this kind sad. of economy, even if you have money, you will spend that kind of money on something like a 5 series. Right. Almost or, uh. or, or three series. Yeah, because like another 30, 40,000 you can get a 5 series. Yeah. Might as well. Mm. You have an actual boot. Thanks for tuning in, man. Yeah. Please click the subs subscribe button if no, you, you like. You threaten them. No, you better click the subscribe button, man. Please. And the bell, bell button. Please, please. <laughs> please uh, press the button. <laughs> Alright, see you guys uh, signing out from the Lexus UX. <laughs> <laughs>